Hey everybody, this is Kyle Farley with AMPM Guide Service and Hooked and Travel. Now, I have an Alumacraft 205 competitor tiller. I'm a multi-species guide and I've got to have it set up in multiple ways that's going to be beneficial to me on the water and whatever species I'm going to be targeting. And I'm going to go through today, we're going to be doing a walkthrough, we're going to be doing the modifications and the way I set it up for a multi-species guide. Now hopefully this will actually help you with modifying yours or whether you're actually going to buy the boat and see how it sets up. All right, we're gonna start from the outside and work our way in. Hopefully you enjoy the video. All right, here on the back transducer board, I have a 150 Merc four stroke and a 9.9 .9 on the kicker on the right side. So all your transducers are basically gonna have to be on the left here. Now this here going from the left is my fish hawk for the probe on my downrigger balls. Now here is the 83200 HST WSBL for the lower ends. I have an active imaging 2, 3 in 1 transducer, and a 3D structure scan. This transducer also is going to have a 455 and 800 kilohertz on the downside scan imaging. This has the chirp, this has the fish reveal, and the traditional sonar all built into one unit. 3D structure scan has 455 kilohertz. I use this mainly for downrigging and looking for deep water fish and structure that and get more detail than this allows me to do. This overlays it into a three-dimensional view underwater. As far as transom savers here, this is an angled transom saver. This is basically the only one you can really put on this boat. It's got to have that angle coming off and up. The traditional roll-on bars and the ones that go straight inside the actual bar on your boat trailer does not work with this shorelander trailer you need an angled one now with a 150 the newer models of 2016 and newer there are no bracket holes for a bracket and there is no piston to in order to put the sponge pistons on top of it so your only option here it was the 150 pro xs or or the 154 stroke is to use a transom saver with the angle as far as mounting my transducers i went with one inch puck board is the minimum I recommend because you're going to be putting screws in and you only want to do it once but you're going to be moving your transducers all the time especially a 283 200 or any high speed transducer because especially on a riveted hull boat you're going to have to move that about 30 times in order to get the perfect picture you're going to up down sideways away from rivets towards flat spots to get the best possible picture on your sonar so you don't lose that bottom it happens with every boat uh, the better ones are fiberglass and for non uh, riveted boats like Crestliners, but every other boat out there is basically riveted so you have to move your transducers around a lot and having all these puck boards allows me to do this and especially with moving transducers on off and different setups. Um, I have got the one inch puck board here, and the, uh, just under one inch puck board coming back down here and all through here. This gives me adequate room and setup especially when you're running this many transducers. Backside here, I'm running a stainless steel prop off this. This is a Mercury Vengeance. This is the 48, 16, 314, and the 17 pitch on it. I'm also, I've also got my 99 Pro Kicker here. This is mainly my trolling applications. And on top of that, I have the Troll Master 3 installed onto it so I can lower and raise my RPMs, which is clutch when you're especially doing trolling the Great Lakes. One thing I do want to mention is your trailering is making sure you get the right hitch ball with the right drop or raise for your truck because you want to be you want this thing level and your whole trailer level as you're towing because you don't want to prematurely wear the front or the back on this trailer so making sure it's level one thing i recommend is always having a rock guard especially if you're trailering on dirt roads you want to minimize all these rock chips that you're going to get in the front of your boat also on my truck i also have a tow guard which can help as well as this for protecting your investment. This here is the optional decal package, which is about an extra $195 US, but it's the black on black, which uh, I find is a little bit nicer and a lot cheaper than getting the shadow edition. All right, we're gonna start at the front of the boat on the interior here. I have the Lawrence HDS nine inch. I have my active target homemade pole here, which I'll produce a link here in a second. And this is the 105 XI5 for the uh, motor guide. Now this is a 36 volt system and this is a 72 inch shaft. One thing I highly recommend is a 72 inch shaft no matter what trolling motor brand you go with 
because after about two, three foot chop, that prop's coming out and you're just losing any grip you have. So having that extra foot and a little bit going down below that surface makes a big difference in anything bigger than a two foot wave. I also have the XI5 hooked up to my Lawrence through a gateway connection with the motor guide, which works phenomenal. And then on top of that, I have a ram mount here on the left for my XI5 to help stabilize that in rough waves and when I'm trailering. As you can see, I've also mounted my 12 inch track along the front here. This allows me to slide my HDS systems or any fish finder that you have back and forth from here and move it back to the back console if you ever choose to move it just for trolling or you're gonna be casting for applications up here. Uh, you can move something side by side here. Now, as you can also see, is I've also had a track system, another foot one on the front side here. Now, I use it because I use a RAM mount for my Lawrence Active Target, or if you're gonna use a Garmin Live Scope or a Humberg Mega Live, is uh, allows you to have that right at the tip of the boat, so you're facing forward, and the way you have your actual trolling motor mounted on just off to the right here, that pole's not gonna be in the way. Now, one thing I do highly recommend that not a lot of people are doing is hooking up to a RAM ball. Because when you're in landscape mode, or whether you're in active target um, scout mode, or whether you're in the version for the Garmin, is when you have it there, it allows you, like this, the RAM mount allows you to tilt that up and down, which is a feature or no one is really using, which is clutch, especially if you're fishing less than 20 feet. It allows you to scout like a Hummingbird 360, but instant and you can move in real time as you go up and down, left and right. It's absolutely amazing. Another thing I have here next to my active target is another RAM mount on a track system. Now this here, this is actually the Scotty version, and I've got two brackets tied in here. I use this as a shallow water anchor stick that I can just plug into when I'm like three feet shallow. And I use that because I'm only using it probably two to three times a year and there's no sense in me buying a $4,000 shallow water anchor when I can make one for $40. Uh, I'm gonna eventually do a video for that, but this here allows me to spike it and hold my boat in place when I'm fishing shallow water, and I can actually push along too as well. As you see on my right side here, I'm using a Brocraft tool holder up in the front locker here. I've got my toiletries, my hand sanitizer, I've got my active target module up there, my wipes, and I've got sunscreen and bug repellent all up in here. And then here's a light for the front. Along this upper right side here, you can see I have my tool holder, I have my electronic foot pedal, and I have my fish wasteling on the right. And this is the stock netting that comes with the boat as well. And then we look to our left, and then I have my rope for my front of my boat, another spare electric foot paddle as well and then I have my active target transducer pole hooked to the right and stabilized there and then you guys you can see on my stool here is I have the Rapala tool holder as an extra spot for another pair of pliers because you can never have enough pliers on hand especially when there's pike involved and they're big. On the front right here we have another lockable storage lifted up here I have my spoon box, and it's good enough for probably about 15 trays as well, uh, depending on how you wanna arrange it. The front left here, there's another good amount of storage, the exact same as the right. Bag of troubles, my Ned rigs, very, various plano boxes, floats. On the front left here, it's not lockable, this is the front live well. And uh, I don't actually use it as a live well because I don't keep much fish. I'm mainly a catch and release guide. All my soft plastics and jig heads in here. Uh, I've actually plugged the live well with a bit of plumber's tape and silicone around it so the excess uh, water doesn't come in and soak my baits. On the front right, so this is the dry well. I have my anchor rope here in my anchor. I have my drift socks. I have my marker buoys. Add a little bit of extra dry storage I might choose to put in here, extra clothing or something like that. Uh, it's very handy and it's extremely dry. I love it and it's lockable. All right, here's the rod locker. Now, I don't choose to use this in tier uh, rod holder, simply due to the fact that it allows me less rods and it's cumbersome trying to feed stuff in and out. 
Now, everything I use in here needs a rod sock. And I'm gonna do a um, video on how to make your homemade rod socks, but it allows you to put twice as many rods in here. And actually for putting rods in and separate them, I actually like these Eve trough filters that you can get like Home Depot or Lowe's. And these things actually put between each layer of rods and allows the cushion and protection of the rods and reels. Right now it's kind of a little disorganized because it's the end of the season. Yeah, this could probably fit a good 12 rods in here if you manage it quite well. Another thing I've done along this deck here is that I've added rod straps here and I put one midway through and I put one right at the very back. That way it allows me to lay two or three rods going this way and strap it in the middle and two or three rods going this way along the deck is strapped in the middle. That way you can utilize and have a bunch of rods on the deck and be, still be out of the way. Now, as you can see, I've done the exact same thing on this side of the deck. Now I strap and I put one on the back over there. Inside the rod locker here, this middle compartment opens up. To underneath for your battery storage here. This is the Minn Kota onboard uh, 10 amp charger for three banks here for each of these trolling motor system. Series wired uh, for my trolling motor battery. I have two spare props here. I have zip ties, all my terminal connectors and spare wire strippers, and electrical tape, paracord, marine goop, more zip ties. I have electrical wire spares, spare screw sets, wire clamps, prop wrench, spare, spare gas hose. I have fiber fix and then I have duct tape as well here. A lot of my emergency electrical equipment modification I've done is I've added a net that you can get off Amazon that all the boat manufacturers use. This is a 24 inch one. I store my life jackets on these seats here simply due to the fact that I need the storage space up front for other tackle and other storage needs. And this is out of the way and this is right access right there in case somebody needs one or wants to wear one. Yeah, some in-floor storage here. Now, this is a lot of my trolling setup and gear. It's an inset that you can put in uh, the 3700 series Plano Tackle in trays there. One, two, and three. And a mixture of a Plano tray and other trolling gear in here. As I get it out. Here. I have my Minn Kota alternator charger, the MK3DC onboard charger installed here. And this is rooted going up into here, up underneath. And I've drilled a hole through the side here. And then the cord, the electrical, goes up through the side here, underneath the speakers, and along my rod locker that goes along the right here and goes to my back battery. So anything excess from the big 150 motor gets dumped from my um, my startup batteries into my trolling motor batteries. And I have it mounted here. As you can see just to the right of my console here, I've installed another net here. On the left here, we also have more storage. I got a toolbox. I have downriggering equipment. I have downrigger balls in there. I have a shortened trolling rod set up for my probe for my fish hawk so I can use off a ten, two pound ball when I'm not using it off a downrigger. Spare keys and spare downrigger parts. Here we have my cooler. Uh, it's very well insulated. I'm very impressed, unlike some other boat brands where it's just an inset and there's no insulation around. The only thing I'm gonna probably do is I'm probably gonna add some insulation in around these parts here, just so I can have an extra seal right here and a little bit extra insulation. But I am very impressed with the uh, insulation qualities. Most ice and drinks last cold all day in 30 degree heat. As you can see here, I have a two foot cannon track system with a rod tree in place. And this is on a Trax Tech Alumacraft clamps they're set up with. Now this whole setup with these track systems is you cannot move these tracks any further up along the boat. I've tried and you are unsuccessful. You may be able to do it with a six inch track or a possibly a 12, but not a 24. That's why I have the two here back this rig this way, which I actually quite like. Now here I've got the Canon tube rocket launcher type rod holder, and I've got a Downey Salty S17, the dual clamp system, which a lot of the musky and salmon guys use, and I absolutely love it for my dipsies. Here I've also installed an extra 
netting system. And this is a 52 inch net I can get off Amazon. And here I store my musky cradle. I store my fish descender, lure retriever in here too as well, and some fish um, release tools in through here. And I'm gonna have a video here one day about making your own fish descending device. Because if you actually catch any species like sunfish, bluegill, bass, walleye, fish that don't have air bladders that can decompress, um, you'll actually kill them if you catch them over 30 feet. You can't release them adequately that back down to that depth. Thing the other side here, another 52 inch netting and the exact same setup for a 24 inch uh, track system on the right and on the back further as well. And the 52 inch net and I have my bump board and my lure retriever here. The extendable one from Fravel that extends out to 15 feet. It saved me quite a few lures over the years. On the right side here, I've installed some Berkley vertical rod holders. This just allows me quickly to put rod in when I move spot to spot real quick or I've already, clients already have rods laid down or just to put in a net inside it. In behind the seat here, I have my main tackle box with a lot of my jerk baits, spoons, spinners, crank baits, all on through here, trebles, all that stuff, and all the little gadgets, reels, and everything, spare trebles, my Laker, musky and pike box so in the workstation here i have a spare boots here i use for the day that are waterproof i have my leader spool is what i really love is i got various tools that i use throughout my fishing and this it actually becomes a really nice useful chest tool holder that way it's right behind my seat and right ready to get at it in behind the seat also here is my daily day pack this includes all my clothing, my gloves, my hats, my spare clothes, my waders, sunproof stuff, warming packs, everything like that. And then right here is a massive pelican case for first aid and for, and for survival. And which is clutch, especially when you have it right next to you. You may never need it, but it's nice knowing you have it right there. And then that thing is going to float and it's going to be completely waterproof. And below here, I also have my pair of wading boots in case I need to get offshore or get into a river or something and wade. Another thing here, we have the lockable rod storage, which is about 10 feet. So you can fit a lot of long rods in here. And I highly recommend using rod socks as well. Another nice thing about the carpet along the top here is this is open loop carpet. You can hang all your lures off here in the trebles and they will not get caught and they'll come out very easily. On the back by the driver's seat here, I installed another netting here. I have two day boxes, the right and left here, from different types of lures, different species that I switch in throughout the day. And also here is a medication kit. I have my meds like Benadryl, Tylenol, Advil, and I also have Epi um, because you never know with allergic reaction and a lot of people don't know they're allergic to uh, a lot of different items. Trust me, I know. As a paramedic, you see it quite a bit. People don't know, and especially when you're two hours out in the middle of the bush, or out on a lake, you just can't get help fast enough if you have an allergic reaction. In the back right here is my storage. I have my safety kit, my flares, my maps. I have the master switches as well back here. I have a spare bilge pump. Um, this area will get wet, it always does. And I have my inline switches for my active target, my NEMA, and my 3D structure scan. This area will get wet, so whatever you plan to put back here, having a waterproof map case or a waterproof fold down bag i also have my fire extinguisher here as well and then back here is the two batteries that i have in parallel now with all these switches and everything like this is i highly recommend labeling all your switches labeling everything coming in and out where it comes to it just makes things a lot easier when you have an electrical problem somewhere or something not quite working right it's a lot easier to backtrack Back here is the main live well, and it goes all the way back here, which is able to fit in a big massive pike or muskie. I have my leech container. Now, that is a cutting board that I've made, because Lumacraft doesn't have the uh, dividers that come with it. So make sure you drill holes soon through it, and it'll fit all the way through and back in here, all the way down to the back of the live well. And there's two spaces for it. And then I also have my bleeding rope as well for salmon out in the back. 
So after we have the track system I have mounted on the back with more track stack mounts here, I have a downrigger, my Scotty, and then the plug-in in the back, my electric there, and it's on a six inch base as well in an elevated pedestal mount. And the exact same duplicate on the back left here as well. This is just a manual that I have just as a backup. There's the other plug for it, rod strap as well that comes back on each side. This little shelf is I got at the dollar store to keep my scents and everything and tape measure all in here. Cup holder, and then we're gonna look back in through here where I store all my electronics, GoPro, AquaView, my stabilizer, trolling fins, cards for trolling, stuff like that, but extra batteries, tripods, electronics for on the boat. And this is where I have my 3D structure scan module mounted as well. Most of your electronics is gonna be run through the back here, through this back panel back behind here into your back battery. Now most people are gonna have two nine inch screens, which it comes with a handle that comes out through here, which you can mount two nine inch screens and put them inside here for the electronic storage. I chose to remove that simply due to the fact that I have a 12 inch screen and a nine inch screen, and I wanted to slide them in on a track system, which you simply just cannot do and have them stored in that there. This actually gives me extra storage as well. So I have my 12 inch HGS here, my fish hawk, which is not right here, is going for repair. And I have a nine inch that I can either mount here or up front. Here's our instrument panel for the Lumacraft on the console. Pulling out for storage here, it's lockable storage. I have my remotes from my XI-5 and my Trollmaster. A VHF radio, the red box there. I put all my SD cards in for the season. Quick access bottle tunnel, electronics mounts I have screwdrivers, clean screening knives, tools I need quick access to, lighters. And then back here, another VHF radio, goggles. I have my fishing glasses, and then I have lights, more fishing glasses, my temp probe, cleaning solution. Um, the inset trays here, you can get at the dollar store, which I highly recommend. They're very valuable, help keep the stuff divided and organized. Here's what it looks like for my 150 tiller and then 99 kicker and the seated position here. I also have an extension handle on this. This is the 14 to 24 inches, I believe, which is perfect for just the extension right back to the seat. And this gives you access to both for trolling as well. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. This is the walkthrough of the LumaCraft and all the modifications I've done, how I've set it up. Hopefully you've learned some today and if you like it, please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching our video today. Have a good one.